trying to get the weapon shaft back into place. And uh, Jake looks up and goes, oh, what's up, dude? <laughs> we lose being operated by Corey Copley. I've just had a wild idea. Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic. <laughs> So I was looking at not enough side to take to Robot Havoc because I'm just a little worried about Low Drinks exploding itself and not being able to make it through a two day competition. Uh, and I was like, well, I really like this design. It was fun to drive. However, what if we just went bigger? Now, the problem with this uh, is that this pushes the weapon really, really far out and I was already having trouble with one wheel being a little bit off the ground and not really uh, contacting too well. So I thought, well, I mean, maybe we put it out the back and shrink everything down a little bit. That could actually work, maybe. Um, yeah, just a, a fun little idea. I don't think anybody's ever done this before. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna give this a shot. I've actually already printed up a test chassis. I always do a PLA test chassis for ant weights. Uh, this is my PLA test chassis. You can see that we've got a space in the front for HDPE to go. We've got a very, very tight electronics bay in here because I'm kind of trying to push the weight down as low as possible. This is my PCB weapon bar and I can put differing hardened steel teeth on this. So the lighter we can get the robot, the heavier we can make the bar, which is really, really cool. I always like a heavier weapon bar on things. Uh, so this kind of will sit out the back here, a decent way actually. Uh, I just hope that it doesn't overbalance the robot because that could be a little bit of an issue. I mean, with the HDP on the front, it should be fine. I'll also acetate the front too. So if we end up sitting on the actual bolt out the back here, it shouldn't be a huge issue. Um, I mean, actually, look at the moment. Uh, I don't know, it's not too bad. It, this is not an accurate test in any way, shape or form, but uh, it, it's not bad, it's not bad. I think we can get away with this for sure. All right, the trick though is gonna do print this chassis in ABS, PLA is just not gonna work at all. It is gonna shatter immediately. And also it's much, much heavier than ABS. Ah, so it turns out that this shape is very, very, very hard to print. This is the best I got after like three days of trying this and many, many attempts. All the rest of them are already just trashed because I was very annoyed about this whole process. And yeah, these wedges that are supposed to hold the HDPE are just mangled because the cooling on ABS is not great. And yeah, if you try and cool the base then it all warps and if you don't cool it, then you get this and you can't really do variable cooling or at least I haven't found a way to do variable cooling. Uh, yeah, so that was just a massive, massive pain, especially because my ABS printer does not have an enclosure, which is just not fun and leads to some severe stuff like this. It's now only a day before Havoc and I need to get this robot moving. Thankfully, uh, my fellow builder, Steve, has helped out. He has an enclosure on his ABS printer. He's managed to print this very, very nice copy of the chassis uh, out of ABS and it is good. It is really, really good. Now, the Eagle Eye amongst all of you uh, may have spotted that there is a lot of empty space in here and so much so that in the test print there was actually a back wall which is the separator between the weapon and the electronics and that doesn't exist in this new chassis. Uh, not only did I think that was gonna be really hard to print in ABS, I wanted to fill it with my favorite material for combat robots right now, which is HDPE. And specifically, this is part of a milk jug. Now, I also did not consider how wide a milk jug was when I designed this robot, and I've got very, very lucky. We basically only just have enough material to actually cover everything I want to cover and get the entire width of this in. I got extremely lucky here. I really should have uh, catted it for the thickness of this milk jug in mind, but I did not. Uh, however, the front wedge is not going to be milk jug, it is going to be three mil thick HDPE. Nothing should get through this. I have used two mil thick HDPE in the past, 
and uh, had spinners hit it in the ant weight division and have nothing happen to it at all. So three millimeters thick should be, fingers crossed, uh, but it should be basically indestructible in this weight class. So this combined with a massive weapon, nah, I think we've got a good chance of doing something uh, with this particular robot. Anyway, let's get some electronics into here so that we can work out how much of this milk jug we need uh, and how exactly we're mounting this on here. I think it is going to have to be a case of kind of holding this up and cutting various sections away. Okay, with this process basically done, I just need to put a couple of extra screws in here just to hold everything exactly where it's gonna sit. You can see this piece, which is technically the top plate. I mean, it's the top plate and the bottom plate and the separator between the weapon uh, and everything else. Like, it's doing a lot of duty right now, uh, which is actually good. I like having things that perform a couple of functions, especially in an ant weight where weight and space are a big problem. Uh, so now that that's in place, you can kind of see a couple of things. So first of all, we need to trim some stuff off this side. I'm not sure how well that's coming up, but it does actually have too much in this wheel. This wheel is currently fully jammed up, so we need to trim that down. Uh, and it's actually, yeah, it's good because I was a little worried I didn't have enough material, but it seems like I've got plenty. I also need to trim off the front. So what we're gonna do is, fairly simply mark the bits that I feel like need to come off of here. This doesn't need to be super accurate, it just needs to exist. And sometimes that's all you need really. Uh, so we're just gonna cut, actually we'll cut to here, there is a ridge here, so I'm just gonna remove that ridge entirely because that's more than we need. And then, of course, we also need space for this to sit. So we actually might as well just remove a big section here. And then I'm gonna connect that down underneath so that I've got space for the electronics to go through because this cable needs to feed in through underneath into the actual build so that everything works effectively. All right, with that done, we now just need to undo this and cut it properly. Uh, but that is always probably a bit, like this is a better way to do things, especially for a, an actual build, is to just slam it all together and then trim based on the actual outcome of the build process, rather than trying to get something to fit that you've cut before building. Ah! So, this could be a problem. The whole robot is, well, it's mostly together. Obviously, we need to put the weapon system on, which uh, is not around yet. We'll get to that in half a second, but uh, for right now, this, this is our issue. We touched the ground at the back and we touched the ground at the front. And uh, uh, yeah, I can turn this wheel uh, and it doesn't really move the robot, which means that this is gonna have traction issues, but that is okay. We can 
either nudge these holes in this faceplate to move the faceplate up, we can sand the faceplate down a little bit, uh, we can maybe cut the top off this bolt as well. Uh, there's a few different options. I mean, I don't really want to cut this down, uh, but I could cut that down a little bit. Uh, I also don't actually know where the balance point is. Hopefully right now, uh, hopefully right now the robot is balancing forwards off those wheels. Um, I don't really have a good way to test this. Okay, forwards, maybe. Um, yeah, that's interesting because I kind of want it to be as forwards as possible so that uh, we're not driving on the spinning bolt at the back. I guess it's not going to be a huge deal if we are, it would just mean that the whole robot will kind of have a slight drift to it uh, in the direction that it wants to turn anyway. Uh, and we'll have to sand down this front wedge. But we need to know how heavy we are so we can actually work out what weapon we're going to put on this thing. Alright, let's see how we are doing. Obviously we can also uh, yeah, change down this front armor if we need to get a little bit more extra weight going. Let's see, we've got 124. Okay, that's pretty good. That's a good starting point. Now, we need to have the two arms for the weapon, and we need to have all the bolting hardware, which is a lot of M4 hardware, uh, which is probably going to add a significant amount of weight. It also adds the nut to the top, 144. Ooh, ouch. Okay, so these are the thinnest that I've got. Uh, they might actually be a touch heavier than these other ones. I've got other ones, but they are more weight. 159. Uh-oh. 158. Ah, yikes. Okay. Uh, I need to work out how to do this. <laughs> tried all sorts of things here uh, and what I've realized is I am trying to have my cake and eat it too. Basically trying to do a full offensive and defensive bot is just too difficult at the moment. I have done all sorts of stuff including lightening the carbon fiber arm, lightening the teeth, just basically everything I can at this point. I even included lightening the wedge a little bit. Uh, but I think that this wedge is actually the problem and that a 3 mil thick wedge is just not doable here. So this is 11 grams. I have now turned around and cut a 2 mil wedge, which again, 2 mil should be fine in the ant weight division. And it is 8 grams. So that's a 3 gram saving, which should uh, do everything I need it to do, basically. So let's get this back together and hope that we actually have finally made weight. Okay, look, we are close enough. With that two mil wedge on, we are at 151.4, which is within ARC's rules because they offer a slight weight bonus or a slight weight allowance just for the differences between people's scales. My scales here have usually been pretty spot on. However, if we absolutely need to and we fail weigh in, we can slim down this front wedge, which should give us a gram or so. And in fact, I might even do that off camera to add acetate to the front. But I have a lot of other robots I'm working on right now, so I cannot dedicate any more time to this one. Uh, so it's time to do a spin-up test, and then that is going to be the end of the video. Okay, so it works. I mean, admittedly better upside down than it does uh, the other way, which is a little bit annoying. I probably could have uh, 
design this to have the wedge facing the other way and everything would work uh, better actually and have it drive this way at people. But uh, as it currently stands, that is not what I've done and so I am left with this robot. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. I might maybe change this up uh, and have it drive forwards at people and then just have a big back wedge on it. I, I, I don't know. Uh, the fight for this is tomorrow, but I have three other robots yet to build. Uh, so I will sort it out sometime between now and then. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video on uh, OC Do Not Steal. Uh, all going well, there'll be a fight report out for this next week. And you'll be able to see whether I fought it this way or fought it that way. Again, uh, by the time you're seeing this video, the fight was weeks ago. Uh, I'm just going to have to choose. I, I can't do what I normally do, which is look at the comments and see what you guys suggest. Uh, this time around, I'm just going to have to make a decision. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. I hope you have enjoyed that video, and I will see you in the next one.